72 hours, goddamn, I'm feeling me. Yo, what up guys, this is Horcrux here, welcome back to the channel, I'm bringing you the most overpowered Magic DK build you've ever seen in ESO. Thank you Zoss for once again breaking the shit out of this game by putting an OP mythic item, pay to win might add, into the game. The good thing is, this mythic item is not meant for all classes to run, it's only meant for, in my opinion, very heavy AoE sustain damage uh, type of builds. Um, this is probably the best in slot that you're ever going to have on a mag DK because the mag DK lacks a reliable heal over time. Well, now you don't have to fucking worry about it. The uh, the play style of the mag DK is the best offense is a good defense, and this build that I have to show you in case for you guys like just epitomizes like how overpowered DKs are going to be this patch. So the more damage you do, the more healing you do, and everything in the DK's kit, that's what it does. Everything that we have is an offensive and defensive spell at the same time. So without further ado, fellas, let's hop right into it. Now, take a look at the character shape. Nothing too crazy. They did uh, nurse some of our abilities, so we have to run a little bit of extra sustain this patch. Uh, here's everything completely unbuffed. Running the Apprentice. Running Bewitch Sugar Skulls. That's very cheap and, in my opinion, best in slots. On a mag DK, crit resist around 2500. Now, this is a light armor build. Now, you may think, well, uh, you're going to get squished on. Well, the resistances aren't too bad. But most of our tankiness doesn't really come from our resistances. It's important to have a high enough health point not to get one tapped. But the amount of healing output and the damage output you had on this set is absolutely just fucking disgusting. Like, it's. <laughs> I don't want to say it's broken, guys, but it run cheesy shit, but this is pretty fucking cheesy. Um, we are bringing back one of our old sets. Uh, I have played around with a lot of sets, so... Uh, the first one, we're just going to say Elfbane. The reasoning behind this is because it extends the duration of all our damage over time abilities, which is really good because not only is having a greater duration on our flame abilities advantageous to keep burning stats effect up, to proc our combustion passive if you guys are unfamiliar with the combustion passive is it's one of the DK's greatest source of sustain um, every time you apply a burning status effect or poison you get magic back for it there's no cap on this there's no internal cooldown it is what it is so that being said all of our abilities on the bar are going to be extended not only that the benefits of having them extended is also healing so say if you jump in hit two or three people with your dots while those dots are ticking on them, say if you can't even reach them, say if they go on stealth, they, 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 they run away, you're still getting killed. And the reason you're still getting killed, I'm just going to go ahead and hop, hop into a run in Ring of the Pell Order. Now, pretty 19% of the damage you deal is your sword. This, this is insane. And so what this build does is it's a super heavy AoE sustained damage build. It's not super bursty even though you can make it super bursty when we're light armor. I did try a couple of renditions of this but I found that if you just go with the sustained damage the benefits are just far far greater and that's going to lead us uh, I'll go ahead and finish the traits. Uh, Ring charge to apply status effects. Uh, this helps apply burning. Uh, the upkeep on that is pretty high. Um, having a disease glyph as well just for the uh, befoulement to, for the healing reduction on whoever we're trying to focus down um, healing has been reduced you know the minor major buffs has been greatly changed and uh, the next set we're going to be going over it got some nerfs and buffs at the same time so I'll go ahead and explain that but uh, yeah Elf if you guys don't know what it does there you go once again not running poisons a lot of people will run poisons I'm just not a big fan personally so first set's Elf Bane Running on the back bar, running Daedric Trickery. Now, we do have an Ice Staff with a Weapon Damage Enchantment. And this is just to keep our uh, weapon spell damage as high as possible. Because the higher spell damage you have, the more damage you do, and also the more healing you do. So, it kind of ties into the whole the best offense is a good defense thing we're trying to push here. Uh, going defending, you kind of need it uh, since we're in light armor to, to get the extra resistances on your back bar. Running a Frost Savage just for the simple fact that it's easier to proc your weapon damage enchantment on your back bar and it pretty much has the exact same pass as the sword and board. Yeah, you're missing like a, another slot for like a max magic enchant 
and but uh, this build doesn't really revolve around heavily blocking sometimes you just have to that's just the style of the mag dk class but uh this is more or less a roly poly oly dk um i much prefer to roll dodge on my dk rather than blocking i mean if you're blocking against three or four people it's more advantageous just to roll dodge out of a scenario instead of you know, trying to block everything, block casting it. That's that's just a slow shit way to play for me. I just don't like it. Next set we're running Rothgar. Uh, this is really good. I consider not running it and running Blood Spawn, but the good thing about this is um, that it does have a really hefty, a really pretty big size AOE. Now, let me get some uh, Rothgar shit going here. See, every time this hits a target, let's see if I can get two up here. I'm getting healed for each time this hits a target. Look at that. So, the more people you're hitting with the Grok are, the more damage you're doing, the more healing you're doing. You guys get the gist, okay? There's a second piece. Um, ideally, you'll want your chest piece to be heavy because you get the, the most armor out of that. And then. Next, you would want your head to be medium to get the most armor out of it, but I unfortunately did not have a medium one, so my medium's on my shoulder. Not the worst case, but you know. Rain tri stats on the head uh, and the body. Now, you could put him on the legs as well, but I figured uh, the, the 20k health gap is more than enough to not get one tapped, and it's really around 26k health. Rain tri stats, tri stats, in pin on these pieces. I do have one sturdy. Uh, the rest are well fitted, I do believe, just because roll dodging is very good this patch um, con compared to blocking. They did change well fitted, you, you do get a little bit more return on it. Um, impenetrable, as you guys know, have been kind of nerfed a little bit. Also, crit chance has been nerfed around the board as well, so people aren't really critting as often as they did last patch. So, uh, having a lot of impen really isn't too beneficial. I really have something that's beneficial to me at all times, like well fitted, than having something that, you know, is not up at all times. Anyway, uh, next on the jewelry, you're running two recovery, actually three recovery. Now, you could play around with this and uh, put one in spell damage, but I really don't see the need for it, fellas. This build does insane amount of damage, and I, I don't have a single heal bar besides my oh shit button. Like, there's no heals whatsoever. So, this is why we can push as much damage and sustain this. We don't have to worry about tanking this at all, because that's pretty much coming from this ring. Um, do you have a bloodthirsty trait on this? I didn't change it, just because uh, they did change the uh, the uh, linearity, I guess would be the correct word, from the 90% threshold down to whatever the execute range is. So, I think, don't quote me on this, I think it's at 20% health. You get the 350 uh, spell damage. I'm not entirely sure, but if you guys play Mag DK, how frustrating is it to have someone super, super fucking low and you just can't finish them off just because of like a undeath passive or some nonsense? Well, this this really counteracts that. Now let me go back to the Daedric Trickery set. I, I know I mentioned it briefly. Now, um, we only have this on our back bar. We only have LP on our front bar. Don't know if I mentioned that guys to you. That's what allows us to run a monster set as well as a mythic item. Now, Daedric Trickery. Last patch, you could only get uh, one of these buffs at a time. Now, you can potentially get three of them. Um, I did play around with Jorvid's um, Guidance, which extends the duration of all your major buffs. It's a really good pairing with this, but I found that you do lack somewhat damage and having to reapply your dots constantly and you just don't get enough damage from that set and it's I just don't like that set too much in addition to that you have to run it on both bars so that's why I opted to go with the Elfbane Daedric Trickery combo here now the good thing about this this is a buff and a nerf because they changed it to where the buffs last for 21 seconds which is a compared to 20 seconds then you get a new buff every nine seconds now they did nerf major minning major protection and uh, major vitality unfortunately but this still the set still performs amazingly well because you can have two up to three of these at a time so if you if you have a major minning or a major vitality whatever any two of these buffs on dk is phenomenal all these buffs the heroism gives your ult charge 
which is going to get you to your ults quicker so you can do more damage, increasing your sustain. Expedition, the class lacks uh, Expedition or Gap Close. The only Gap Close you really have is Leap and Searing Chains, whatever it is. And it's such a wonky ability, I prefer not to run it. So, you get the healing buffs, protection, just, just a perfect set for the Magic of DK. And you only have to run it on one bar. It's pretty much 100% uptime. It's whenever you deal damage. Now, I do have this set up to where I have four pieces uh, on the body at all times, six or five pieces. You guys see that there. Um, you could alternatively, if you didn't want to have uh, four pieces on the body and then the weapon in the back, you could put a uh, trainee gear piece on uh, just for the one piece to get the health bonus. If you think you need a little bit more tankiness instead of having the uh, maximum magic on both bars as compared to one, that's entirely up to you. Uh, but uh, I just prefer to run it this way. 20k health is uh, more than enough for me. So that does it for the sets that we're running. Uh, hopefully that this made sense to you guys. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments. I will be streaming on this build later for gameplay as per usual. Now let's go over the skills. Front bar has changed now. They did nerf Ellie Drain. Unfortunately, they, they buffed and nerfed it. Uh, it's a buff because the Major Breach got buffed, but it's a nerf because they uh, nerfed the magic return that we get from it uh, by about half. That uh, they, they hit us hard, I'm not going to lie. It is a great source of sustain, but we'll come back to that. First, we're running Burning Embers. This applies burning, so that 2600 magic cost you get pretty much only costs 2100. Because of the combustion passive, it's a great dot healing over time. Uh, this helps you stay on the offensive instead of having to go back to your back bar and heal if you ever do have to heal, to be honest. But if you need you a little burst heal on the front bar, just reapply this. There you go. Fossilize, best CC in the game. Goes through roll dodge, goes through block, roots them. Just a phenomenal ability. Burning talents, I would not run this unless you're running Elf Bay, and we are running Elf Bay, unfortunately. This is a really super heavy AOE rooting hitting dot. It repels really well with Pell Horse because it hits so hard. And plus the roots, you really run people all stamina very, very quick with this ability. Flame Lash. Now this will turn into the Power Lash. This is also to uh, keep up our healing on our front bar so we can keep our sustain pressure going. So you'll fossilize, whip, whip, get a Power Lash, big ass heal. Now I did try Molten Whip. Um, Though this build is kind of bursty and damage, it has a lot of damage, I don't think you can get away with running Molten Whip all the time because what you have to do, you have to stack Seething Fury stacks by running like Flames of Oblivion and such. And it's it's kind of annoying to try to keep track of and then it can be blocked and roll a dodge. And um, I really wouldn't run Molten Whip unless you're in like a dueling scenario. Uh, next we're running Engulfing Flames. This increases all of our damage across the board and 10% on everyone. Pretty much every ability and every skill we have is flame damage, so you get a 10% across the board. Buffed up, this goes up to 9%. Unfortunately, we cannot get up to 10% value unless you stack super, super heavily into spell damage. So uh, take that one with a little grain of salt. The combo I kind of like to do, if you can, when you're going into any fight, you obviously want to have your buffs up. You want to have Ellie's Rain on your target. The first thing you need to try to do, you don't want Fossilize right off unless you have to. Like, if you see a Warden coming in with the burst, like, right off, hey, you probably want to Fossilize that dude. But the first thing I, I like to try to do is to hit him with Engulfing Flames as I'm pushing up to them. And then as I get closer, you want to root them. Fossilize. The reason we want to Fossilize is to ensure we can land our Burning Embers because it can be a roll dodge. So engulfing flames cannot be roll dodge, uh, talents cannot be roll dodge. So we go fossilize into the burning embers just to ensure we have all three of our dots ticking on them. And then after that, it's just whip whip sustain pressure. That's pretty much the combo. You go into a group of enemies, you want to drop your AOEs down first, and then when you're targeting someone, put up your embers. That's pretty much it. Uh, DK is all about buff management as long as you keep your buffs and debuffs up uh, the class pretty much plays itself as you guys know ring ferocious leap this is our gap closer against night blades uh, primarily in sorks who uh, just like to streak away from you does a lot of damage it's when we heal you with the pale horseman when you jump you get a shield it's just an overall great ass ability it really is and again this ties in the whole best offense is a great defense scenario 
on our back bar. Like I said, we're running Ellie Drain. Didn't nerf the M Magic Steel, but we compensated for that uh, by running an extra uh, regeneration glyph on our jewelry. Kawhi getting blood. I rarely use this, guys. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, I rarely get to the point where I, I have to spam this. Uh, you're pretty much capped off the entire time as long as you can keep your dots up uh, running the Pell Horseman's Ring, and it's, it's phenomenal, but uh, this is our burst heal from when we get into those other shit scenarios. Dragonfire Scale, this is an amazing ability when you pair it with the Horseman Ring. Not only is it mitigating all the projectiles by 50%, it's shooting fireballs, it's pretty much flames of oblivion at people, and guys, every time this hits someone, you're getting healed as well. So you can just have this up and just get passive hitting just by people welling on you in the back with like snipe spams and line attack spams. It's fucking great. Like everything we have, you just get so much healing from it because it does so much damage over time. It's, it's. If I haven't said this enough, guys, this is broken as shit. This ring. I, I can't wait to dig on Kids in the Cyrodiil this week. It's gonna be phenomenal. Boss on armor. This is our uh, major resolve uh, buff. It also does damage, guys. Keep that in mind, everything we have here does fucking damage too, so if you're in a group of enemies, fuck it, reapply this. Instead of using this uh, every 20 seconds, fuck it, use it every 10 seconds. I mean, that's a pretty hefty hitting dot, I mean, it's 9k over 10 seconds, it's not bad, it's just even more healing. So, we need to take a look at all the dots we have technically, we got Dragonfire Scale, Volatile Armor, Burning Talons, Engulfing, and Burning Embers, at all times. You get so much healing back from this, guys. I know it doesn't seem like a lot. Only 19% of the damage you inflict with the dots, but it really adds up. I would say in Cyrodiil, every second I'm getting like 15 to 2k ticks back worth of health, considering I have 3 or 4 people on me at a time. The only drawback is the Templar purging everything, but it is what it is. Next, running Channeled Acceleration. Now, you can run a Race Against Time. It's entirely up to you. I just like having the extended duration. Uh, because this does uh, increase your critical damage by 10% and your movement speed by 30% for 12 seconds. I just like having the longevity of this because in most scenarios, get out snares and, and roots and such, we're going to roll dodge anyway. That's the point of having well fitted on the build just so we can roll dodge a lot to get out of situations. Another thing to note, because this is a, a channeled ability from the Sigic Order skill line, uh, when you go into the passives here, uh, where is it here? Yeah, so while you're casting it, you also get major protection. Now, of course, major protection was nerfed, but uh, it's still nice to uh, take 10% less damage uh, from all sources as you're casting this. So if you get CC, break free, pop your wings, and then while you're casting this to get away, you're taking 10% less damage, roll dodge, and you're out 5,000. That's just kind of the way uh, I like to play it. I mean, you can run the other one to get snare removal. You know, insta cast, but it doesn't last nearly as long, and you just have to use it too often, in my opinion. Last but not least, temporal guard. Uh, we get minor protection on our back bar. Uh, this also did get nerfed a little bit, unfortunately. Instead of 8% damage mitigation, we're only getting 5%, but it's still good at back bar ulti, in my opinion. Uh, runners up, if you just want to go in and just jump into Zerg and just have fun with it, run Magma Shell on your front bar. Um, you pretty much can't die for the duration that lasts 18 seconds because of Elfbane. <laughs> and plus you get so much healing from the uh, Pale Horseman's Ring. I mean, it's it's dumb, guys. It's it's really dumb. Alright. That really does it. I really can't think of anything else. Uh, much more to say. Now the potions we're running are the uh, Alliance Spell Drought. reason running these it's because, for one, it gives you crit on the front bar and back bar. It gives you a major intellect, increases your magic recovery. It also gives you major prophecy, giving you a crit as well. This is just an all-around good-ass pot. Now, you could get away with, if you wanted to use a slot on your bar, instead of running these potions on your front bar, instead of using burning embers, you could potentially swap that out for a degeneration to get your uh, major sorcery buff. Now, if you wanted to do that, uh, you can run these expensive ass pots, uh, the heroism pots. Where are they at? Here they are. So uh, it gives you the uh, major intellect, increasing your recovery, uh, endurance, your restoring stamina, stamina recovery. But also gives you minor heroism, giving you ult for your DK. As you guys know, ult on your DK is very, very beneficial. So you could run these as well. Uh, it's entirely up to you. And then. 
plots you obviously want to have are try sass in case you're just trying to get the fuck out of situations and detect pots for night blades uh, this does give you major sorcery and major intellect uh, the only thing you wouldn't get by running this is crit on your front bar but uh, that's okay um, still worth uh, popping these to pull night blades out of stealth they're pretty squishy anyway once they're uh, done being a little bitch <laughs> And uh, again, guys, sorry for the voice and the, the coldness weather. We got upper res respiratory infection. It fucking sucks. No, it's not the Rona, but it is nonetheless very annoying. So let's go for the champion points. Leave that for last. I'm not cap. Keep that in mind. Go over the blue tree. So I got 37 bless, 37 Melbourne, 56, 17, 52 here, 37. I don't think it's worth putting points into this to get exploiter. Uh, you can if you want, but uh, with the remaining points you guys have, let's see, you're going to have uh, 44 more, no, 34 more points than me. I would honestly put them in Spell Erosion and Master at Arms, the rest of them. Red Trees, we got Ironclad, Resistant, Hardy, Ellie Defender, Dots, Light Armor and Focus, and then Quick Recovery. With your remaining points, I would put them into uh, Quick Recovery and uh, Ironclad. And Ellie Defender. Green Tree, really not important. We've got Warlord, Summon Sprinter, 1 Siphon, just to apply the debuff that has to be cleansed. 43 in Arcanist, 52, 52, 26. I would put your remaining points that you have into Befoul and Sprinter, and maybe a little bit into Arcanist, get that up to 11%. It's higher left to you guys, but the, the blue tree is what matters. More points in Spell Erosion and get this you could up to 20 percent but i like i said guys i don't think exploiter is really worth it uh staff experts a uh, good alternative just entirely up to you now play style whether you're you know if you're in a very small scenario where you're against one or two three people you know it, it just really depends how you play if you find yourself running into sorcerers all the time shattering blows is your thing it just depends on the scenario guys like i said it's your build make it yours so that about does it for the build guys I really hope you enjoyed it uh, you had a great Halloween I will be streaming with this build later on today and me posting this video and uh, throughout the week or well, re remaining of the week um, I will try out some different renditions of the build running different sets but I don't think it's going to change anytime soon I even took the liberty of golding everything out that's how passionate I am about this build and it's just absolutely amazing, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. Thank you again for coming. This has been Horcrux and Deuces.